Hey guys, today I want to talk about how to create this um, specific type of smoke here. This is built in Houdini. Um, it's a pyro effect. It's a real simulation of smoke and um, the whole simulation is rendered and put into a flip texture book. So if you don't know what a texture book is, that's all right. I'm just going to uh, put the texture book uh, put the texture for you to download so you can just easily use it. Um, so first off, we need a material. I've already created everything, so I'm just gonna go ahead and show you everything I've done. Uh, if you don't know how to create a material, just right-click material and put, uh, give it a name, and right uh, double-click and open it up. So this is the texture I talked about. This is the flipbook. It's 64. Uh, I guess yeah, it's 64 frames of animation of a um, smoke simulated in Houdini. So you just um, drag that texture out into the material itself. You uh, right click multiply or hold M and left click it gives you the multiply. Uh, and the particle color it's really important. Particle color one right here. Um, this one goes to here, this one goes to here. As you can see just copy what I've done here. Uh, and the multiplier for the opacity as well is really important because uh, later on we play around with the opacity a little bit. Uh, and the depth fade is really important in here because as, as you can see when the effect gets close to the wall, if I don't use the opacity, let me show you this. I'm um, sorry, if, if I don't use the depth fade, I have to give it some time to compile it, I guess. Okay. So, look how weird that is. So, depth fade is a really important node that you have to be using. Uh, use the depth, depth fade. I put the fade distance default to 100. You can use something else. I don't really care, but look how beautiful that is, how smooth the transition is when it cl gets close to a surface. Let me show you this. So it doesn't really collide with anything. I mean, it definitely collides with things, but the player wouldn't really notice any artifact or anything. Okay, so now that the material is done, uh, actually you need to set that material to translucent and that's alright. When the material creation is done, right click a Niagara, we want a Niagara system or emitter, it doesn't really matter if you know the difference, go ahead and create yours, I'm just going to go ahead and use the Niagara system here. Um, so we create the Niagara system, give it a name, actually let me through it for you. So usually uh, we want something that we can work with. Something like a fountain could be cool. Hit this button in here and hit finish. And that's pretty much it. So you need to change some things in here. First of all, the emitter properties is CPU sim, but you, if you are going, I mean, CPU sim is going to be really all right, so you don't really need to change it to GPU. But if you want to use a lot of particles in your system, then you need to change this to GPU and fi use fi fixed bounds. After that, um, the spawn rate, I've created a parameter for it that's user exposed. So just come here, type in float. Uh, click on this one and then give it a name and then just drag it spawn rate and then just drag it here usually I'm just using the value of one so I guess that would be okay for you too so the initialized particle you need to be having all the exact nodes in here if you know what you're doing you can go ahead and mess around with things that's more than right um, but if you don't know how to work with Niagara system, then try to repli repli replicate what I've done here in your own system. Um, lifetime mode would be direct set. We will 
create a user exposed parameter float yeah click on that give it a name of lifetime um the lifetime is 20 for me default value is 20 but yours will be probably different it depends on you i'm i'm gonna show you every parameter for me too and uh, the same goes for the color mode as well. The rec set create a user parameter for uh, for it called color, and of course this sprite size mode should be random uniform because we want some randomness in here. You know, uh, these are just sprites. These rotate where the camera rotates, so they could always be in front of the camera. So we want something to be random, so we could hide the trick we're using um, and if you make it random uniform you're gonna be facing two different values in here create two, two float values user parameters and drag them into here you can then come here and change the defaults but doesn't really matter uh, I mean it's gonna definitely matter eventually but not right now and that's it, that's pretty much it. You need to add a velocity, so come here. I mean, I don't know if that one's got a velocity, but I don't care. Add velocity, you need some type of velocity. Um, so come here, you won't be facing this specific page in here. You can just type in random in here. Random, random range vector and uh, then as you can see I've then come here make vector and then range random range float for X Y and Z and 0 5 0 5 1 5 for all of them and the maximum amount would be 10 10 10 and the coordinate space is world I'm using this for um say initial location so this is the initial location that C smokes using. I generally want to um, initialize all of them from one specific point or a cube. So sphere location uh, would be really logical for me to use. So the sphere, sphere, you have two parameters: sphere radius, sphere origin. Um, Sphere radius is a float value you can use here. Sphere origin is, I believe, a vector value, which you do not really need to change. So just this one, sphere radius, create a user parameter and expose it uh, and drag it in here. Then later on, you could uh, change it, change the defaults from here. Um, Sphere distribution should be random. Uh, hemisphere Z should be ticked on. Surface ex expansion mode should be outside. Normalized thickness. I guess this the, is this the default. So let's go to the flipbook. You need this one. You need this node into the particle update. Remember, particle spawn is for the time that the particle is spawning. Particle update is going to be changing the particles throughout the their lives right so if you want to um, play the animation in the texture you need to be using this node in the particle update so add sub UV animation well uh, the animation is 64 frames so the start frame is 0 and the end frame is 63 um, and in here you need to I mean I did that to be more comfortable you could just come here and change it from here but I've created a float variable from here, like float, and dragged it here called animation speed, and that's pretty much it. Oh, and when you add velocity, it will just give you some error, some warning. Uh, if you not, if you know what you're doing, then go ahead and do what you do all the time. If you are new to this, just hit OK, apply or whatever, and let the Unreal do its job. Okay, scale color is what we're using for um, so so the particle alpha is coming starting from zero, going to something like 0.9, and then eventually 
uh, it will go to zero. It's based on the whole lifetime. It's not one second. It's like the first they start and then when they die. So at the time of 0.6 of their whole lifetime, the alpha will be 0.9. So how we can do that? Um, scale modes should be RGB and alpha separately, and scale RGB is one of one. Scale alpha is what we can add float from curve. Float from curve. You can have it here. And then you create your curve. If, if you want to add a key to it, you can just right click and add key, and then you're on. Um, so there are some things in this part render as well that you need to change. This is the material we've created. So you can just go to the material, browse, and then come here and hit this icon here. And then you're going to have the material. Alignment should be unaligned and always facing the camera. Um, then we come to the sub UV. We have 64 uh, frames. It means we have 8 by 8, a texture containing 8 pictures in this row and 8 pictures in this column. 8 by 8, so 8 by 8, and sub UV blending enabled. We need to blend them. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's let me show you the default parameters that I'm using as well. So the lifetime for me is 20, as I told you, it's the default the color. You can change it. Animation speed, if I put it to 1, Look how slow they get. They get blended a little bit, like two frames gets blended, but it's not as good, I would say. Maybe two would be nicer. Well, it really depends on what type of effect you're looking for. If you're looking for an explosion, then two would be such a small number. But for a for a for something like a fog atmosphere fog two or probably one would be really good. Um, max size nine hundred, min size four hundred, spawn rate one, sphere radius two uh, two fifty. Yeah, this this is the size for the effect. So if you want to change the max size and main size, that then you have to change the sphere radius as well, or probably a lot of other things. But these are the values. Um, make sure you go ahead and play around with it yourself. That's really important. Um, that way you can get a get a much more better sense from how it works, and maybe you could go ahead and search how to create the type the same effect in Pyro Houdini for yourself. It's not like a really hard thing to do. You can do it easily, but you need to go ahead and research it a little bit and learn some to DNA from it. And that's pretty much it. I hope it helps. And if it did, please hit that like button. And if you have any questions, please um, comment it out so I could answer it. Thank you.